worship for Sunday, January the 17th, 2021. All the baptized have a calling in God's world. God calls not just pastors and deacons, but also a young child like Samuel. In today's gospel reading, Nathanael initially dismisses Jesus because he comes from Nazareth. But from where we come isn't important. Rather, it's to whom we go. In responding to Nathanael, Jesus says he himself is the place where Nathanael will meet God, an allusion to Jacob's vision of the house of God and gate of heaven in Genesis chapter 28. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for play playing a prelude and postlude for us again today. And thank you to her mother, Karen Peters, for recording Katrina's music. Thank you also to our reader for today, Josh Hyde. If you find that you need someone to talk to, or if you need any assistance, please email me or phone me at the church office and I will help you. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of truth, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures, proclaiming to us your wisdom and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. By your Spirit, bless all who receive this word, that upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Children's Time. God speaks to us. I'm so very glad you're here today because I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. My dad once told me a great story about a time when one of my nephews was about your age. My nephew said, Papa, God has been speaking to me. My dad, somewhat amused, asked, and what is God saying to you? And my nephew replied, I don't know, God is speaking French. Now, maybe some of you know French, and so you could have understood what God was saying to my nephew. But for most of us, it can be difficult to hear and to understand God. Today's first reading from the Bible is about a young boy named Samuel. Samuel was probably about 11 years of age, and he heard God calling him. Well, at first, Samuel thought that it was Eli, the priest, calling him. But eventually, Samuel figures out that the voice belongs to God, not Eli. Samuel had been sleeping when he heard God calling him. So God may have been speaking to Samuel in a dream or maybe a vision. And Samuel responds to God saying, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. 
In today's story about Jesus, a man named Nathaniel is introduced to Jesus by Nathaniel's friend Andrew. Andrew helped Nathaniel to hear God's call, and Nathaniel becomes a follower, a disciple of Jesus. It can indeed be difficult for us to hear and to understand God. Who or what can help us to hear and understand God? Sometimes God might sound like your mother telling you what is right or good. Sometimes you might hear God. You might get an idea from God during worship, from the sermon, from the hymns, or from a friend in fellowship time after worship. Going to worship each week is an important way for us to learn about God and to hear God talking to us about our lives. Going to worship each week is so important that when I teach confirmation classes by Google Meet, I ask the students each week if they watched the worship video. Going to worship and being a part of a faith community like St. Paul's is an important way to hear God speak to us about our lives. Another way to hear God speak to us is in daily devotions, taking time each day to pause, to read the Bible, to pray, and to listen for God's voice, especially at the beginning of each day as we ask God to be with us and to help us in the day ahead, and also at the end of each day, as we look back over the day's events, looking for God's involvement in our lives. God speaks to us through the words of the Bible, through sermons, hymns, and other people. I hope that you will take time each day to pause and to be intentional about listening to God. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open facing up to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded and eyes closed to help you concentrate. Or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Thank you for speaking to us through worship, sermons, hymns, daily devotions, and friends. Help us to be intentional every day about pausing to listen for your voice and help us to understand your voice. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. The Calling of Samuel At a time when visions are rare and unexpected, the Lord comes to Samuel and calls him to speak God's word to Eli. Though just a boy, Samuel responds to God obediently, as Eli the priest has taught him to respond. This marks the beginning of Samuel's prophetic ministry. Reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, 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 and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. 
Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The word of the Lord.
all across Canada, bishops and assistants to the bishops of our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada are preparing sermons for use this Epiphany season. I think this is a great way for us to get to know other Lutherans from across Canada, for us to remember that we often need the help of others, and to remind us that we can do so much more together than we could alone. Today's sermon has been prepared by Bishop Larry Kokendorfer, Bishop of Alberta and the Territories, and he'll be preaching in many of our congregations this morning. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Na Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good to come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Come, Holy Spirit that we may see and taste the grace of God afresh. Come, Holy Spirit, that we might share the grace of God with others. Come, Holy Spirit, that we might bear witness with our whole lives to the grace of God made manifest and available to us in Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the sermon series that our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada is providing for congregations throughout the Sundays after Epiphany. I'm Larry Kokendorfer, and I serve as the Bishop of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. It's great to be with you this Sunday. It was a Thursday. It was a moment so alive that it was almost unbearable. It was so simple, really. I had brought our niece, Amanda, who was 15 at the time, and our youngest son, Jordan, who was then four, over to the church on a Thursday afternoon. And while I was in my office returning a couple of telephone calls, they were in the sanctuary. With the phone calls completed, I threw on my jacket and walked into the sanctuary, where I stopped in a moment of epiphany a moment of revealing, a moment filled with the glory of God, God's presence, wonderful and mysterious. Amanda was sitting at the piano playing while Jordan was distributing communion to his invisible congregants who were kneeling at the altar rail. After a moment, he saw me standing at the door to the sanctuary and he yelled out to me, we're playing communion, Dad. And I looked at this four-year-old dressed in gray sweats with a face still partially covered with lunch and his face glowing with an utterly new discovery. He was sharing communion. And I saw a glimpse of God's presence, a revelation of God's work. The father, the pastor in me saw in a fleeting moment, the emerging worshiper, communion sharer, worship leader in our son, something so touching, so incandescent, so alive that it was almost beyond bearing, and I was changed, 
transformed. Is it simply too ordinary, too unsuspecting, too unexpected? Or is it too wonderful, this moment of clarity, of unveiling, of revealing of God's presence? We've entered the season of epiphany, a season of revealing, of appearance, of manifestation. Epiphany, an immediate and meaningful understanding of something, surprising, sudden, profound. Epiphany, an illuminating discovery, realization or disclosure, a revelation. What is revealed in this season is what it means that God became human, that God entered our world no longer satisfied just to be with us, but now is one of us. When that happens, when the incarnation happens, we change too. Our humanity changes. Suddenly, who we see ourselves to be can no longer remain the same because we have seen God in who we are. We tend to expect that epiphany is only about the revelation of Jesus, about seeing Jesus, of witnessing Jesus in various revealing moments. It is not supposed to be about being found ourselves, but, but John's Gospel invites us to imagine that these can be one and the same. That is, Seeing Jesus in those revelatory moments, those unexpected moments, is also when you find yourself, who you are, who you are called to be. In those moments of seeing Jesus, you realize your identity as a follower, a disciple. And you see a glimpse, and perhaps a new glimpse, of something you have not seen before when it comes to your own faith story, your own understanding of what it means to be a disciple, your answering of your baptismal call, follow me. Maybe this epiphany season might take on a mirror effect. That is, when you hear these texts, when you look for Jesus, when you experience these revelatory moments of Jesus, you simultaneously see something about yourself and ask, what does this mean? John's Gospel is full of these moments of epiphany and of what Je following Jesus will look like. For this Gospel writer, it will mean taking John 3.16 seriously. It will mean taking the witness of the woman at the well seriously. It will mean finding those who have been cast out of communities for their courage to confess their faith in Jesus, like the man born blind. It will mean believing that the Spirit is indeed your very breath as Jesus sends you out into the world. It will mean being thrown out yourself, rejected for insisting that God's love for the world and everyone in it, everyone, is actually true. The incarnation of Jesus changes everything. The revealing of Jesus changes us. These epiphanies transform people. Listen to Martin Luther King Jr., who we will remember tomorrow, and his description of an epiphany and his response in his book, Stride Toward Freedom. I was ready to give up. With my cup of coffee sitting untouched before me, I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing a coward. In this state of exhaustion, when my courage had all but gone, I decided to take my problem to God. With my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table and prayed loud. The words I spoke to God that midnight are still vivid in my memory. I am here taking a stand for what I believe is right, but now I'm afraid. The people are looking to me for leadership, and if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I'm at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. 
I've come to the point where I can't face it alone. At that moment, I experienced the presence of the divine as I had never experienced God before. It seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying, stand up for justice, stand up for truth, and God will be at your side forever. Almost at once, my fears began to go. My uncertainty disappeared. I was ready to face anything. Martin Luther King Jr. was transformed by this epiphany, often referred to as his vision in the kitchen. Nathaniel's epiphany, in which he saw who Jesus was, changed Nathaniel, who then proclaimed Jesus as Rabbi, Son of God, King of Israel. It was a Thursday. It was a moment so alive that it was almost unbearable. We're playing communion, Dad. I suspect that most of us glimpse these moments of epiphany, of aliveness, of revelation, of unveiling, of God's presence, the Spirit's work, in the regular, ordinary patterns of life, in a blinding moment of conversion, in a moment of deepened awareness of the presence of God, in a moment of realizing the truth and call of Christ, in the play ritual of a child, through parents ever so lovingly showing a child how to swing a bat, through our young children singing, you are holy, you are whole, beautiful Savior, O come all you faithful, in the hike up a mountain, mountain to pray, in a word of absolution, in an act of justice and peace, in a moment of sacramental meeting, when we hear the drops of water drowning and bringing with the word new life, when the bread in our hands and the wine on our lips suddenly acquires a flavor and a vintage which takes us out of time and out of our human limitations and intoxicates us with God. As we glimpse God at work, this unveiling, this revelation, this epiphany, we hold it in our heart and we return to life different, transformed ourselves, because for one shining, mysterious moment we have seen. These glimpses don't evaporate our doubts or tell us what to do next. Nothing will be visibly different. But beloved people of God, siblings in Christ, it does make a difference to have seen, even for a moment, a taste, a glimpse, something so alive that it's almost by, beyond bearing. For we return to daily life, back to work, back to ministry, to family, to this time of COVID pandemic, different, changed, transformed, back to where mission and ministry is engaged, where the love of God is shared and where grace is gifted, where we invited to live out our baptismal calling, to follow Jesus in the midst of our daily lives, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Epiphany is a short season. Expect to discover many things about Jesus. And in the process, anticipate learning something about yourself. Sometimes the change is monumental, sometimes incremental. Either way, something will happen. Something epiphanous. Let us pray. Into your hands, Almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves, receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps, 
abide in us and enliven us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering spirit, we place ourselves. Take us and fashion us after your image. Let your comfort strengthen, your grace renew, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death, in this world of shadows, and in your changeless world of light eternal, now and forever. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your love is great. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church may live out its calling every day. Hear us, O God, your love is great for the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home, that we lower our carbon footprint, and that we mitigate the harm caused to the poor by global warming. Hear us, O God, your love is great. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, including the most vulnerable. We pray especially regarding violence surrounding the presidential inauguration this week, that life may be protected, that peace reign, that capital cities be safe, that all Americans come to accept the new administration and that a spirit of reconciliation and cooperation mark the next stage of their national life. Hear us, O God, your love is great. For those lacking food or shelter, 
for those who are sick or grieving, for those who are imprisoned or homebound, and for those whom we name before you. That God console all who suffer. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. For our neighborhood, for visitors watching our worship videos for the first time or returning, and for those absent, that all who seek to know God are nourished with God's presence. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. For all those suffering due to COVID-19, that they may know God's presence and be comforted, and that we share the vaccine worldwide. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken and silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Receive the commission and blessing. Go now, listen for the voice of the Lord, and follow wherever it leads. Do not be dominated by anything. Allow no room within yourselves for deceit, but be filled with God as a temple for the Holy Spirit. And may God be with you and speak through you. May Jesus Christ be one with you and raise you to new life. And may the Holy Spirit dwell within you and make you holy. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.